They took everything from us. Because magic runs through us. So you guys have worked on this project together for a few years now, both on like the YA book and then the adaptation into the show. I'm wondering how you guys met and what was your sort of working process like? Well, we met through Selen Thomas, who runs his uh, Frank's company, who, you know, I um, got to meet and as a, a lifelong fan of Frank's work, uh, I was, you know, yeah, I want, would love to meet him. And we, we just began to sort of, you know, sort of throw ideas and worlds ar around and with not sure where it was going to go, but we started to talk about King Arthur um, and the impact that that mythology had on both of us. For me, personally, you know, working with Frank on this, you know, mythology, this sandbox was very appealing. It, it just became a question of like, what, what were we going to bring to the table that was, um, that was new? Obviously, Frank's aesthetic alone would be really captivating and interesting to audiences, but um, we felt a responsibility to sort of approach this in a, in, in a, in a new way. And we began to circle around that image of the of that young woman, sort of her arm kind of reaching out of the water and giving the sword to Arthur. And that the questions that evoked were all good questions. You know, who who is she? What why why this seemingly tragic, mysterious fate? What's her relationship to Arthur? Why is she giving him the sword? What did she have the sword first? And so all of that began to kind of unspool backward to the story of this young woman who suddenly comes into possession of this sword. And, and then the idea of what if a young woman did have the sort of power before Arthur and what would that story be and away, away we went. As far as casting Nimue, like she's a strong woman, um, what were you guys sort of looking for? Early on, um, we were talking to, to Netflix when, when Netflix expressed interest in the book. Um, you know, we were talking about Nimue early on and, and Catherine's name was one of the earliest names that came up. You know, she was, of course, um, from 13 Reasons Why and they had an incredible experience and she did such a, an amazing job on that. So I think she brought a number of really great attributes to the, to the table. I mean, she's this sort of classical look, um, but also this approachability, this relatability, you root for her. She has clear just emotional range and we knew Nimue would need that. What we didn't know, what we couldn't know really until she was up, you know, on this giant rock facing off against, you know, wolves and green screen with sideways cold rain and just kind of, you know, days of sort of throwing her down and was when she stood up with that sword, just how, she, how would she embrace this kind of badass warrior. And we were just thrilled to see like, she loved that aspect of it, the stunts and the, the it seemed like the more uncomfortable we were, she, she was, you know, the more fun she was having. And I think that, I think that shows, you know, we, we she convincingly is this young woman on the run um, and vulnerable. And yet when she needs to sort of dial it up, she really is a kind of Frank Miller warrior. Frank, do you have a sense of how your illustrations from the book helped impact the look of the show? Everything's happened pretty much at the same time. So I think we've all been influencing each other along the way. Um, you know, and, and it's hard for me to be the one to say, but, I, but it's, I know, I mean, I have wanted to be influenced by the show as much as possible. Um, and, and I've, I've, uh, been lucky in that I've been able to get to see some of the things from property, some of the weapons and such, um, to, to to so that these are researched items where where, where which you know which I, I don't have access to that sort of research. The process from book to show just continued the storytelling. So there were you know I, I remember vividly Frank drawing an image that our block four director Sarah O'Gorman we were talking about one of the last images of the show. Um, and, uh, and just a, a frame, you know, and so Frank is drawing and this is something that would then kind of go into the boards and so, and, and then is filmed um, in kind of framing that, you know, Frank illustrated it in. So it's, it's an image that's not necessarily even in the, in the book, but was sort of able to kind of be generated for the show. And that was, um, 
you know, there, there's those sort of touches and, and bits of art, every team leader, you know, or set design or costume or props were huge Frank Miller fans and his, the work, artwork from the book was, was up on all the walls. So it was, uh, it was a really cool back and forth. What sword that's not the devil's tooth would you want to wield the most? Like fictional sword, real sword? It's easy. Give me a good katana. Frank killing a lot of ninjas is what I want to see with that. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, it's got to be a pair. One long, one short. What about you, Tom? Uh, wow, I can't I can't choose the devil's tooth and I can't choose a, a samurai sword. Um, you say you a wiffle bat. Yeah. <laughs> hey, come on now. <laughs> with, the, with the wiffle bat. But this, the, the, well, the He-Man sword, you know, I have the power that could, you know. <laughs> Legend says this sword belongs to the one true king. But what if the sword chooses a queen?